All right, so what we do is we get a piece of paper. Any piece of paper will do. Here I'm just using your standard typing paper. I folded it in half, and then we're going to write the date. March 9th, 2022. Zoom in. So, uh, ballpoint pen, standard. Big medium, black ink. Any ballpoint pen will do. I have my favorites. We'll talk about that later. But today, we're just going to start just making circles. Just like that. That's all you have to do, really. There's no, there's no rule. There's no rule. Just make circles. You can make a line if you want. So just use your, your arm, use your shoulder. See what I'm doing here? I'm not so much doing this, now I'm doing this. Now when you're working on a, a drawing that you want to preserve and make sure that it, uh, it hits the museums for 200 plus years, you're going to want to have some type of a piece of paper underneath your hand so that you don't get oil all over it. But today we're just messing about. We don't have any rules. We're just messing about. Like, what is this we're doing exactly? Well, I'm just drawing the ballpoint pen. I don't have any agenda other than that. Making a video, yeah, that's something. All right, so if you'll notice, I had this shape, right? How did I get this shape? I just made a lot of circles. But now it kind of looks like something to me, doesn't it? You don't know. I'm just telling you. It looks like maybe an animal. Yeah, we'll say that. Now I'm just drawing lines quickly. Before I second guess myself. Notice that I'm doing it in the same direction. It doesn't have to be. I can change it. I can go in this direction. Who's going to stop me? It's loose. It's very loose. At this stage of any drawing, you can just be loose. I really like the loose... Uh, look of some of the, the drawings that I do. I like sketches. I also like the tight drawings as well. I like it all. I don't necessarily like all of my drawings, that's for, that's for sure. All right. Now, what you'll notice is there's a smooth arc to these curves. And the reason why it's smooth, almost as if I was using a template, it's because I was drawing it quickly, and that's the trick. If you slow down, it's going to be a little, a little wobbly, a little jiggly. But if you go quickly, it doesn't really have time to, to wobble. So this is a, a technique, just going very quickly, not thinking much about anything. You can, of course, start to consider the light source and things like that. Generally speaking, it's, uh, this can change, of course, but generally speaking, it's dark underneath, 
some shape and it's light above it. Light comes from here most often. The sun is up there. But sometimes it's not. Again, it doesn't have to be. And if you want to make something look familiar to people, and in the beginning stages of working out how things are going to go, maybe a good idea to stick with standard ways of thinking, standard ways of being. And I think that it is quite standard to have light coming from above. That's in my world. If in your world you feel like it's usual for the light to come from below, by all means, do that. If in your world you're tired of the light coming from above, and you want to see it come from below, do that. So the question is, what do you mean, the light? I don't see any light. All I see is this: these lines. Yeah, you're not going to see the light itself. For a while, eventually, yes. But at the beginning, you're just drawing lines and shadows. And the light is what isn't in shadow, right? I don't have anything in front of me, so there's no reference here. The reference is the, the corners of my mind. So I've gotten some uh, very loose shapes going on here. Something that I said looked like an animal. I felt like these were perhaps the legs and this was maybe an ear. Or it could even be the head. I changed it now. I, I feel like that was the head. And I put in some shadows and I think that the head part here is going to make it darker right here. So I'm just about to the point where I feel like I can start to slow down a little bit and take my time and be a little more careful. So I'll show you how this goes here. So let's say that I want this area right in here to be kind of a gray color, right? So what you do is this. I'm gonna put the mic down a little bit. Okay. So here you go. You're going to not press down hard, although you'd think that it wouldn't really matter with a ballpoint pen because it's either ink or not. It does, actually. So you let the you let the pen itself be the weight rather than any pressure from your from your own hand. And it's not gonna look so great at the beginning. It's gonna look a little splotchy. This is where patience is uh, important. And it doesn't always work out either. And there is no racing. But this essentially is what I do. And I'm working on the higher end drawings. Quite often, I'll do some practice line work like I'm doing now. And the piece turns into something that I would find that would be worth framing. I guess anything's worth framing if you want to frame it, but uh, in my mind, some things are look better in a frame than others. 
So see, this doesn't look so great. Depends on really what you're after, but if I'm after just some very consistent tone of a grayish color, then I'm not quite there yet. I would normally have given up when I was first starting out on this. Say, no, this is just, it's too hard. It takes too long. It's not really worth it. But I think along the way I started to uh, appreciating my drawings a little more and wanting to work them up to a better level of quality, if you will. So I just kept at it. And over time, I figured that it just takes patience because it takes time. The first parts of any drawing with ballpoint pen can be quick, you laying down the line. And as I told you earlier, you're going to want to move quick so you can get a curve that almost looks as if it was put down. With um, a template of sorts, some French curve or ellipses or ruler, some type of a guide. But it's all hand done. And the way that you get that is by going very, very, very quickly. See? The sound effects helps as well. But then you gotta slow it down at some point. Now notice what I did here is I'm going in a different direction. This is cross hatching, just in one direction is hatching. And then you go in the opposite direction. You get a, a cross hatch. And that's okay to do as well. It helps to fill in these areas. There's some splotching going on here. You can see it right in there. It'll hopefully all get smoothed out. When this is all said and done. Now there are some factors involved with how this comes up to be in the final render. One is, it's just how patient were you? Another factor is uh, the pen. Does it clog up? Does it spit out ink from time to time? Another factor is how loose is your hand? Are you pressing down too hard? Another factor is if it's a thin paper like this, there may be something underneath it that gives it texture. Like I don't have any cardboard underneath here because it's just a quick and down dirty picture and I uh, didn't set it up right. Usually I'll have some protection underneath. Always. If it's going to be something that I want to finish up in the frame. Something I consider more than just a, a quick render. I'll have something underneath it. Notice I went back into the previous direction here. So I'm not cross hatching anymore. I'm just hatching. So yeah, these are factors. Uh, the, the one I ended up talking about was you get some texture underneath here and that could affect how it turns out, how it looks. Now if you'll notice it's starting to look a little gray, right? But it is very, very important to have patience. And not to push too hard. And just keep going. The ink will lie, lay down onto the page if your if your pen is working properly. Sometimes your pen, the ink doesn't come out. Sometimes it dries up. Sometimes it comes out too quickly. As I said, it spits it out. So all these things can be somewhat remedied by having a piece of paper off to the side where you're just doing like this. Uh, moving the pen around, keeping that ink flowing. That's one trick is that the ink will, if 
it stops, sometimes it just, just want, doesn't want to come out of the tube. You'll know the temperament of your pen as you as you start to use it. I get kind of nervous when I'm about to do some part that's like this. That's gray, and it's a big area. I'm not so nervous at the beginning because if it starts spitting out ink on me and drying up, then I will readjust. I can't erase it, but I'll make the drawing work with what it's delivered to me. Notice how it's getting darker here. I'm kind of speeding up a little bit. I'm losing patience. Which for the, the case of this demonstration is perfectly fine. Because you can see how it works when you're not patient. But as I'm Getting closer to the finished area, being gray, I start to get a little nervous because I'm thinking, wow, this is looking all right, looking good, finishing it up. And then this, this ink here just comes out in a big way and it looks like a big splotch on my otherwise pristine area that I've been working an hour on, two hours on. And I'm like, ah, oh. but I readjust. I make it work somehow, or not. There's a lot of drawings that we'll never see the light of day, and I'll just call those drawings practice, much like this is much like this is. Right. One of the things I think is happening here is there is some texture coming through from the table underneath. And that's not allowing it to be as smooth as it could be otherwise. It could also be the paper itself. I haven't worked on this paper in a while, so I'm not really sure it's it's characteristic. Some paper is better than others. And the odd thing is, is that sometimes the paper, often the paper that is more like a newsprint style, the, it's a better surface to draw on, oddly. But that paper is certainly not archivable. It's not gonna be around in 200 years. It just turned to dust. Unless it's kept in low humidity and low light. Who knows what future generations will be able to do with paper. They may be able to save it, spray a little paper remain, that's what they'll call it. Just spray some paper remain on this and it'll stay around for another thousand years. And if it can stay around another thousand years, it's forever because somebody will figure out how to keep it. Yeah, almost looks like pencil, huh? It's pretty amazing that pe ballpoint pen can actually can um, I copy the way a pencil looks sometimes. Now, the ballpoint pen that you want to use for this effect is one that has an oil-based paint or ink, not the water-based one. Water-based pens are no good for this style. They just don't work. There is no way to get uh, a gray tone unless you do some stippling or cross hatching or something like that because the, the line itself is just either black or white. There's no in between. There's no middle, middle ground. No gray scale as they call it. Nope. You're just going to get black or white. But with this, you do get kind of a gray color. Yeah. It's a bit splotchy. You see there are little areas of white where the paper is still sh showing through. And I'm just going to go over those areas 
And if you go over it randomly enough, but spread out and some and dispersed somewhat evenly, then you'll get um, the effect you're looking for. It'll be kind of rough, but as long as it's even, then it won't look splotchy. So there's a splotch, if you'll notice, right there. And the way that I'm going to deal with it is work around it rather than on it. If I keep going on it itself, it'll just darken it. So I want to work around it. And then uh, that area will fall to the back, and then the other areas will be pushed up. It works. The smoother paper, somehow the archivable paper, sometimes is not as good. Sometimes the paper's too smooth. There's all kinds. Find paper that you like, that gets, gives you the line work that you, that you really feel comfortable with, that, that suits your taste as far as what quality you're looking for stick with it. You know, it doesn't matter at this point, really, if you're just starting out with ballpoint pen. Or not even, like, I'm, I've been doing it for, hmm, ballpoint pen? Let's see how long I've been doing it for. I've been working with ballpoint pen specifically since around uh, 2001. Yeah, it's so over 20 years. But I'll, um, I'll get some paper that I, that I just start drawing on. Newsprint type paper, crepe paper. And then I'll realize, hey, I'm kind of liking this drawing. So maybe work it up. However, the ones that I've framed up to, up to this point, the ones that I felt like were worthy of putting in a gallery, worthy of selling, let's say, let's use that as the benchmark, would I sell this? Yeah, those, I like to use a little better paper than just newsprint type paper. Now this paper is, uh, I don't think it's very archivable just standard typewriter paper, a little bit smooth, a little bit of a grit to it though as well. Hmm. All right, so, uh, you know, I could keep going on for another 20 minutes or so, but I think that uh, I'm gonna stop doing that area right there. You can see how it kind of looks like a pencil. I said I'm going to stop and then I keep going. Hey, what's that all about? So this other area, like just below here, there is some implied texture based on the lines, you see. So it looks like there's some texture there just based on white and the black and the white and the black and the white and the black showing through like that. I'm pushing a little harder here because I can see that this will be a little darker. So that's okay to go a little harder. Why did I decide to do that? Why did I decide to make this darker? Because earlier, let me zoom in again, when I did this at the first, at the outset, I um, made this dark without thinking, without giving it much thought. I was going on about the shadows and light uh, direction and all that. But it came to be that this was an area that I felt like should be dark at that point, at that stage. So it's really nice to get these decisions out when you're not really thinking about deciding anything. You're just 
your hand is flowing quickly and therefore you are not really burdened with any kind of choice. In the beginning, everything is okay. There's no mistakes, right? It's like as you start to finish this piece up, then you feel kind of like it's a little more precious. And then it just gets more and more precious. Time adds to that feeling. How it comes together in certain areas, like for example, right in here, I kind of like it. This little part right there, I thought that was pretty nice. And then there's lines here that I don't want to necessarily fill in because it gives a texture, an implied texture. So when you start to feel an area is something that you're attached to, then it feels like, oh, this is something I can't, I can't hurt, I can't destroy this, I can't ruin this, no. And sometimes you don't go forward with anything because you're paralyzed with fear of messing it up. Which is a strange thing, just 20 minutes ago I didn't have this. It wasn't here. And now it is. All right, so you see how this is starting to come together a little nicer. Actually has some quality line work going on as opposed to a more sketchy look. I will use the term fleshed out which just means polished, so means done up in a way that it's higher quality. Time has been taken. The looseness has gone away. It has been fleshed out, as they say. So there is some areas in here that I'm not sure if I want to get rid of. I kind of like this um, sketchy look juxtaposed with the little bit more polished look, the fleshed out areas right in there. Okay. Right. So let me zoom out a little bit and we'll talk about where I see this is going. Now I have this area fleshed out and this is dark really probably as dark as it's going to get. I don't think I can go any darker here. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, uh, let's call this one. And this will be maybe, I don't know, a one. This definitely will be a one. A little bit lighter in here, perhaps. So, yeah, I think this is good for now. This is uh, where we're going to leave it. I'll come back and work on it later. Until then, stay groovy.